Hello, Shirley Peters here. Um, welcome to warm, sunny uh, Sydney, <laughs> Australia. Um, we're having, we are in summer and it is a beautiful um, wet season so far. It hasn't been all that hot, but now it's getting warmer and uh, the, uh, the grass is growing like nuts, as you can see out my window. The dam is full. Uh, it's just a, a gardener's dream come true at the moment. So uh, cicadas are still there. You'll hear them. They're quiet at the moment, but they're not, uh, they don't stay quiet for very long. They've been around since September, very noisy. Anyway, down to work. We're going to do a uh, painting of Salzburg street scene today. And uh, I'm going to be sticking with watercolors for a while. And these are my colors in the pans and you would have seen them from previous videos if you've watched them before. And if you haven't, there's, if you're new to the channel, there's, um, a video I've made where I, I show how I've put the paint into these pans and I shall put that little link above here um, or down below and the paint and the materials are listed below as well but what I wanted to do this time was to show you how you can make a change to a photograph that you've taken yourself if or one that you've been given but you're not quite sure that it's going to work out um, I'm going to make a change to this and rather than do the change on my painting I thought if I do the change here on this particular um, printout, I'll put the paint on here and see how it looks. Um, if I'm happy with it, then I know I'm fairly safe to go ahead and do it um, on my final painting. So, Anyway, we'll have a go. Uh, I'll turn the camera and um, if you could watch over my shoulder, I find that's the best way. And if you have any comments, please leave comments below. I love them. Um, and uh, like and subscribe. That's the best way. Notification bell too, hit that one. That way, I'm a random uploader. I'm not one of these, you know, three times a week or once a month or I don't have a routine. Um, I do them when I can and, uh, and as often as I can. I try and get more than one a week if I can, but uh, things happen around here. We get busy, other things. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll turn the camera. I wanted to show you the block of uh, watercolour paper that I'm using at the moment. It's, um, and I'll do a little bit of an unpacking of it so you can see how it works. Um, if you haven't used a block, or I guess you call it a pad of watercolour before, it's actually glued all the way around. Oh. First page is always a shock. You open it up and you go, oh no, I didn't want to buy yellow paper or black, sometimes the archers ones always have a black sheet. But what it is, is they've glued it all the way around. This is a protective sheet, the top one, and you have to take it off. And there's only one way you can take it off, and they always have a bit of a clue here, open. And it's got one little patch where they haven't put glue in. And I like to take a credit card or royalty card, like that, and put that in. You can also use a knife. This is quite safe, it doesn't tend to. And always make sure it's a clean card too. I've been caught before where I've done this with a card that had paint on it and managed to ruin my first page. Not good. Okay, oops, like that. I'll make sure that dries off. And now I've got a lovely um, piece, uh, a watercolour sheet there that's already glued down and stretched. I don't have to stretch it anymore than what it is. So I hope you saw that okay. Now these paints are bone dry because it's been about a week since I've used them. You, watercolour you can just leave laying out. So what I will do is grab a brush and I just put water in each one of these to wet them down. And if you have paint paint that you're not sure of its quality, you think it might not be rich, like this is rich colour. If your paints are not as rich, try wetting them a couple of hours before you actually start work, or the day before even. You will find the more moist they are, the, um, the better the pigment will release and be easier to work with. But I know that these are mainly um, Daniel Smith brand, and I'm also trialling a couple of Australian brands called Art Spectrum and 
forgotten the other one. It starts with a D. I'll remember in a minute. I'll have it down, down below. So that's me just wetting up. I did it quickly enough so that the, the, they didn't dissolve onto my brush to make the colours mixed amongst themselves. Contaminate, that's the word. So what I wanted to do first though was to, I'll put that aside. I'll get my reference painting out. I've got the window behind me wide open, by the way, so that's an invitation. I've got a little sign out there saying, welcome blowflies, you know, come on in. <sighs> so you'll hear buzzing. But my, I figure as fast as they come in, sometimes they want to go out too because they know there's no food. So I'm just going to take a very large brush and um, put a little bit of dark grey and blue mixed together. And I'm going to just turn it on its side, darken this building here. more than what you think it needs. Just leaving that a sign. This is actually a crooked picture. I've, I've used Photoshop to um, correct the distortion that the lens had produced. Just for the, might just add a little bit of more blue on this side. Just towards the edge, almost like a vignette. And then I'll oops, spread that in. Now sometimes the ink itself will start to run. If this was an older, if this wasn't, um, if this was a fresher um, print, it probably would run as well. So you might lose a little bit of detail that way. But um, I also think, uh, just not happy with this building here. You can't tell that it's three-dimensional so I'll add a little bit of a shadow uh, down here I'll go over that thing over there okay so now therefore see what happens here so hmm I'm increasing the dark to the light. I hope that can be appreciated. Uh, and that will now be my reference for this drawing, uh, for this, uh, for the sketch, for the um, painting. And you, you will have the original to, to look from as reference. I might end up scanning this in and putting it up. Or maybe I'll do it again. <laughs> Doesn't look, that's not pretty rough, isn't it? So I'm going to do it as a portrait shape. When it's up this way, it's called portrait, and this is called landscape. And that's pretty well universal, regardless of what subject matter you're using. So I'm obviously not doing a portrait. I'm doing a, a building, building a cityscape. Got 2B or 3B. I'll definitely go for 3B. It makes a nice, softer pencil mark and I've already marked the middle there I know that's the middle because I folded this up before and roughly there is the middle I've done this painting once before so I'm not fresh at it I just quickly put in what I think is important Hard to pick it. Okay. That's one side of the building. That's not needed. But I won't just because I've made it an error right up front. <laughs> it's typical. I won't do anything about that. So this particular building here is so very close. It's actually got sun on it bouncing onto the other one so it's a complicated little lighting scene and hopefully I don't need to worry about that too much. So I've done the outside edges of the buildings, 
I will add in the church behind because that's a feature and I don't want to lose it. Just one side of it really, just to not get too wrapped up in detail. There's a clock face to about there. Oh, there's these beautiful three flags. And in the photograph, they really do hang straight down next to this building here. So I'm going to bring them back a little bit into the middle part so they're not touching this. They don't look like they're overlapping this side building. So there's more details. Of course, you could add, you could be adding in um, uh, um, all that, all those windows if you wanted to, but I suggest you don't. I think the best thing to do is do the floors, do the, do the actual divisions of the buildings themselves. Now that I look at that, I've left, I've done my little um, one building there, one there and then the bigger one on the end here, which is not quite right. But you can see that. You can make your own decision. This is how loose I get when it comes to a little bit of the detail up here close to the, close to the um, camera, to where you're standing, the viewer. Now back here, the, the floors look a little bit higher on this side for some reason. And they go in on this kind of a slope. Down there. Now, if you happen to be watching this closely and notice I'm not being very accurate, you'd be you'd be right. I'm not. I'm just putting in what roughly is going in that just to give me a, a few shapes the important thing is the size of people always important because it gives you the reference I might start with their feet their feet are out there so one there one there keep the head small because otherwise they look like children and here, coming out here, is a bunch of tables and chairs, and I'll just put them in like little sticks, very briefly. So that's basically my drawing. I won't bother rubbing it out. I'll just get stuck straight into some of the details. I'm not going to put any color in that back building at this stage. I'm going to try and leave it white because it needs to be as pale as possible. And if I go putting a color on it, that'll knock it back from white. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start with, hmm, it's a cream colour, this building. Now I have the, con the, the conflict of do I do um, colour or do I just do tone? And to tell you the truth, I think I'm going to just do tone. So I'm going to start with a little bit of blue and a little bit of black and a touch of brown, a bit more brown just to make it very neutral. And I'll do just the shadows to start with, something really pale and something easily fixable. And a few little details. Spots here and there for this, for this distant building. Now, wetting the brush up quite a bit, I'm going to just Add dirty water is my first wash using that colour tone that I just made up. I'm going to do the same on the other side, kind of just following my lines fairly carefully there on the edge. Come back to a bit more of the blue, black, brown combination. A little bit darker on this side. Trace down that. I'll have another go at that. I didn't do that very accurately. I do want a straight line there. And because it's on dry paper, this is giving a fairly sharp edge. 
Now I'll wash the brush and take that in a bit like that to give me a wash going in that way. And that's going to end up being dark, but at the moment that will just by doing from doing a wash all the way across, I'm delaying the decision making on how to draw these buildings in. At this stage I can happily do the floor, which I in this particular print, it has a sort of a greenish tinge to it, and I think it's because of these yellow buildings are... I won't do it that green. Um, they're reflecting a warm light down onto blue tiles, believe it or not. I think that's it, but whenever I can, I like to add a little bit of interesting colour, even though I'm doing dull tonal painting at the moment. Right. I'll go back into this building now and, and add a little bit of warmth. So I might choose, choose the uh, orange to start with and put that on this building here. And I'm going to do it in a very haphazard way, like that. Now I'm going to go for the yellow. Put the yellow on this one. Keep wetting my brush to, to knock out the colour. Hmm, just realised I haven't got any kitchen paper here. I have to go grab some. Okay. Good opportunity to let it dry a touch too. There's the kitchen paper. Got a towel. Oh, here it is. I'm deliberately leaving the edges rough. I'm not taking it right to the edge because uh, I want a sketch. I don't want this to be a, a, a concentrated, perfect painting. I want this to be loose and natural looking. So I'm going to take a touch of blue at the back there and add the black to it. This is definitely going to be very distant, neutral. I'll just try it. The way I try it is I'll do something like a little window and just make sure it's the tone that I want. And I'll add a bit more detail. This is where my sketch of this particular, um, my overlay, I've got to be careful that I don't follow too literally because it'll just I'll end up repainting my rough, rough bits. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, that didn't come out very um, clearly. I'll have to explain that again. If you, if you touch, if you throw paint on your reference, just be aware of where you've put the paint. <laughs> what's yours and what, what was there originally. So for the fun of it, I'm just going to go in with a few dark pieces now. Just produce a little bit of contrast with the tone while that's still wet. That will give a nice looseness to some of this area. Dark here all over. Now back down here, dark. So this is kind of still working wet in wet. And I know that these dark colours will disappear. They will fade out so much. Let's get this burnt, burnt colour here. Burnt sienna. I think it is, or it's tiger's eye or something similar to burnt sienna. Different brands of paint manufacturers have different names. I 
half closing my eyes, I think I'll put some of that dark area here too. And so to slowly work back up there. I want some blue and black, dark tone, a bit of brown. Touch of the green, the base of this building here. So even though I started off fairly dull, I'm slowly adding colour as I go. Wash the brush now and just drag that up a little bit. Come over the ground later. Now, there's a lot of detail here. There's a lot of windows going up here and I want to get that very dark. So now would be the time to do that while it's still moist. I'm going to go for the blue and the black. I think this is phthalo blue I'm using. See that greeny colour? I should be using ultramarine because it's a bluer blue. It's not a greeny blue, it's a pinkier blue. So just for the fun of it, I'll just put that combination blues up and down that side of the building. And then I'll get a vague sharp edge and I'll go around that sign. I'll get a sharp edge again. And might match that blue down like that. A few sketch marks. Uh, we're running everywhere here, so I'll just make that merge a bit better. Same as up there. Run that in. Hmm. Right. This is what I call an underpainting. I might blend that across. It looks totally disastrous. I'll dry it and then we'll see how we go bringing it up to uh, the photographic level. While I'm here, just spread a few more marks. Okay. Okay. Throw that little piece away. Mm. Now I shall, what I, oh, by drawing it off, I've given me a chance to look at a few items here. And I do think I need to uh, fix that wall, of course, bring another shade in there and then lighter there, and uh, maybe put the darker edge on this side as well. So I get the, the bones ready for the detail, before I start doing any detail. And I'm kind of missing purple. I think I'd like to add a little bit of purple in at this stage. And I do get the feeling that this side here could have a darker purple edge. So what I'm going to do now is, yeah, I think that's good enough. Hmm, I can't decide whether to do it. Yeah, I think I'll just do it generally and all over colour there. And here I am saying I wasn't going to go to the sides, but now I am. So don't trust a word I say. The same on this side. Purple is sort of a shadow uh, when you want to put shadow in and you don't really have a specific colour. So I'm going to go like that. Knock those two blues together and then go up that building there. And to take a bit of brown, knock it into that green. I'll put a bit of pink in there and see what colour. Pink and orange. This is something that I've seen the masters do. You want warm colour, just mix a few together like that. <laughs> Rub your brush across the across the batch. That's why you always put your, your, your matching colours together in the palette. Mm. Just want to get that a bit more orange. 
Okay, so I'm just going to run that straight down like that into the girls. I'll fix with them later. Yellow, browny colour, maybe under here. Just building up a few different shades. Turn that over. Getting the darks going along the edge here. Okay. Now this is quite a pretty blue, so even though I've got the purple there, I'm going to go for a slightly prettier. Oop. I might try and get, oh, I'll change my mind. I'll go to this one here. Try and get a pretty blue happening. Not that easy. No, I didn't want that one. I want that one. Okay. Using the edge of this lovely fat brush. General shadows, I'll be coming back. While I've got that blue on, I can go over the orange area with some shadows too, with the blue. That makes good shadows. Bit of detail behind there. So, while everything's a little bit damp here, I'll add in some more darks. Very dark brown here. My need for for blackness and darkness, just satisfied by these shadows. Detail there later, a few verticals. I'll even bring that down a bit. Two lines here and there. Okay. Keeping that red brown on the brush to put in some architectural things happening here. Okay. And this side again. Now I'll go for a blue with that brown. One of those blues with the brown that I had. Okay. You never stop drawing. You, unless you've drawn the picture in really detailed, you'll constantly be looking at it for, uh, for messages of the structures. Okay. And I'm, I'm really working hard oops, at not putting in too much detail. That can come later with the final few strokes. Just want to get a... Hold still. I want to go and get a brush that um, don't go anywhere now. This might be a bit risky. This one might be better. Okay, I've got a couple of acrylic brushes here that are wedged shaped uh, rectangles. One I just bought recently I've been using for oils. I don't know. That one's acrylic, so that one might be better. But this has got more control. It's a beautiful solid brush. I'll just trial a little bit of colour here to see how it works, whether it reacts. Yeah, I cleaned it. I wasn't quite sure I had cleaned the, all the oil off it. I 
has been cleared, so that's good. So what I shall do now, I'm going to go in with a touch more detail here and there. I'll start at the back with the church. Oh. Not quite sure this is the right brush after all. One of the reasons I choose oversized brushes for my style is I like it because the um, you, do, you can't get enough detail. You can't overdo the detail. It forces your hand to be much more, what's the word I'm looking for? Simplifying. You can't detail the work. Everything has to be simple when you've got a big fat brush. It's like a child trying to draw with a big crayon. They can't do a very detailed job because of the fatness of the implement. So, I'm going to just be drawing a few little details here in the various different blue colours that I've got on my palette. Could even use a little bit of the darker green colour there. Giving a hint of windows, and there's a lot of um, signage in front, so I'm not going to have much fun with being specific, so to speak, so I may as well just enjoy myself. I'll be coming back over some of these with white to fill in the shutters for the windows, the window details. Now down the bottom here, brown and black together, very dark. for those arches everywhere. Seems to be the fashion here. Salzburg. And because it's at the front of the side of this, I'm doing very heavy dark colours here. Well, solid black, basically. Mm -hmm. Looks like I've got short windows here and I should have made long ones, but it doesn't matter. I always see it as a seven. I always draw a seven for a window. Across and down, across and down, across and down. That helps. Steps, lead your eye into, always good. This looks like there might be some sort of little statue thing in the in the roadway there, little rondel, oh, I don't know what you call that, pillar, bollard. Uh, while I've got this very dark colour mixed, the girls' pants might just end up being... Mm. And because they're both uh, uh, walking and they're probably in step, they have similar pace. One's a little bit narrower, taller maybe, or shorter, who knows. A couple of people at the back there, I'll just put the figures in, about the same height. Make sure, the idea is to try and have the heads all about the same height. That gives you, the, I mean, they are, some people are taller and shorter, but on the whole, if you're taking the photo, you're standing there looking. If you want it from that angle, that's where you have to. Now, I've got a few details at the back there, but I might just come back with some water and wash those out. So, working on the other side now. I shall just be a little bit careful that I don't overdo it. A few verticals. So I've really washed my brush out now, and I'm just using it like a sketch tool to add in the windows. Mm. So that one's got the white, that one's got a green. I'll try and make that a bit brighter. Sign coming out there. We have got some red flags down the centre. Various countries. Red and white stripes on that one. Red and white stripes on that one. And something else at the back. Everything's red, red, white and blue for the looks of that. 
had a bit of blue there and there. Just gives that feel of festivity. Uh, now, pale blue. I'll go for a pale um, purple at the back. This is where sketching uh, plain air at the time, what colours you choose there are the ones that you keep for reference because they will be so much more accurate than whatever printout you get off your crummy old Canon or Epson printer at home. Mine goes, it's a perfect example, I get the weirdest of colours. Okay. So basically now I've blocked in a whole pile of rough. <laughs> Look at these all running everywhere. Just encourage that running. Bring that windows down like that. That will help. This area here, I'll pull that down. Shadow underneath the lip with the lip, the building, darken that. Yeah, great. Now. Oh yes, I was just about to add some colour, bright colour for the girls' jacket, red jacket and a blue jacket. Oh, these, the paints have dried up already. I don't know where to, when I started. It's my style. Everyone's got their own way of doing figures, but practice a few on a scrap piece of paper for a while and you'll get a feel for how you like to do them. I'm very simplistic. In fact, there should be something along the lines of... Um, oh, turn that off just in case. Oh, this off, good. Um, there is a sort of shadow thing happening underneath these girls, so I might just... It's not exactly... Um, there's no sun, there's no direction, but I might just darken that area under there. I'm using anything... I'm, I'm just dabbing my paintbrush into blues because I expect I'll be darkening. Actually, while I'm at it, now that I think about it, now might be the time to... Uh, drag out a bit of shadow underneath that area in there along here because if it was raining I could have some lovely vertical reflections here but I won't do that that would not be true to the picture now I'm going to get a fairly fine brush now and start with detail this is where I, this is the drawing side of, or the true drawing, you could say. Choose a dark colour, very dark. If you can't get black, get as close to black as you can by mixing blues and browns. In fact, blues and browns are ideal. But when I say if you can't get black, your black might only give you a grey if you're, if it's not strong enough. Oh, now, it's fairly important at this stage that I stop the looseness and I start tightening up. So one of the first things you have to do to achieve that is to dry your work. So I shall do that. I'll put this one away for a moment just so I can move my chair in. Oh, come in a bit tighter on this. I just added a touch of detail onto the right side of this church. It's not at all accurate now that I look at it closely, but brushes a bit. I have to make sure the brush gets very thin. It's got to really have a thin edge. If I turn it sideways, it'll get, it'll be too fat. So a few little details along here on the right side so that I get that feeling of roundness, I was going to say. Um, I'm not tracing all the way around it. That's what will ruin it and make it into what they call naive painting. So if you just leave some bits out, then it becomes sophisticated. <laughs> One way of putting it. also a matter of lost and found. Some things can be indicated and some things not. That means you've 
what is found is what you show and then what you can't see is lost. And that's a theory that's supposed to be a well-known motto for painting. Mantra. So here I'm just filling in some of the, I'm losing some of the windows, I'm gaining some of the windows and I'm losing some. I'm going to go straight, that's not dark enough, I really need a strong, strong black. So if you're not, if you're, as you're painting along, if it doesn't feel you're getting a good enough mark, because there's always the possibility, for mine anyway, that this will fade, all my watercolours fade, especially on this paper, this Baohong paper, I find it doesn't hold the colour as well as arches. I've, I've come to that conclusion. So here I'm just fixing up some errors that I made before in perspective. And you can make errors in perspective. It can be just wrong. You can't really fudge it. You can fudge other things. But if your perspective is wrong, that's your basic bones. And that's what's important that you keep them pretty much accurate. So out of all those different colours I was putting on before, the method in the madness was that later on now you get a multitude of tones. It's not a sameness. There's a variety of the colour and tones that are in the, in the surface of the painting. So that makes it more interesting to look at. So here we are up to this point. We'll do another seven up there. Some of these I'll just put a double line just to show I meant it. When you make a mistake or say you've got things wrong, double down. I'll pretend there's grids on those windows. I'll put another line on that, but only because it's supposed to be there. Um, some little... Oh, okay, so here we go. We've got a little, uh, what do you call it? I've got a room for I've got room for it too, which is fortunate. Street lamp. Yay. Put that there, there. I'll come back over that with a bit of white just to make sure it looks like I meant it. I'll put some signage further down here. And I think there's more there are more um, lanterns, but they're becoming less obvious. So I'll just put a couple little lines going out, a little horizontal here and there. I don't mean anything. On the back here there's a lovely window that's looking straight down the street. Probably where the Lord Mayor or the local bishop lives. Um, quite black there. Lines this way. One girl's got, oh, there's more steps. Steps are always good. Just notice those. Um, I think there's pot, pots and greenery there, but I won't do that yet. I might just work on the chairs. These are things that are not quite black, but the shadows under them are black, so that's probably good enough to use black on the brush. In the windows. I might define them with a slight black edge. See if that works. Yep. And it's sort of like a warning thing happening there. Comes down. It's probably a, a sign. Here's another one. Inside those buildings, there's a lovely greenness on this print, which I kind of like. So I'm going to continue with that. It also reflects across the road, so I don't mind that. I'm just going to add this greenness in. It's almost a contrast to the red, red wood. There's also a very bright light in there, which now is a good enough time as ever. 
I might come over that later with a little bit of white. There's some orange in those. This is the beauty of this paint. It is so thick, it's almost like gouache. So I'm, be, I'm using it a little bit like gouache here. Some more red across the front there. Red down the side. Intensify that. Underneath this there's a little bit of warmth. Same with there. Now back to the black. Black back on the edges of those things I just described. Now this signage, black outline on that lovely little garnish on the end onto the wall. Back here there's this another sign coming out the window by the looks of that. And now I'll go down this side. Very carefully, I can put those three flags in there quite well. And they have special little, it looks like they have special little holders on the walls. And I can add then what other details. I'll just fiddle. Slightly dark at the tops there, to those windows to define them. Okay, now I have to half close my eyes and stand back and go, this is way too bright down here compared to this colour here. Really should be as dark as that. So that will mean for me, I'll get my lovely big brush out, save me making any decisions that might, I might regret because <laughs> it'll be so fast. Purple, how about that, a bit of that blue, yeah. I don't mind messing these, these, these um, you know, contaminating the paints because they will clean up easily just with a wipe. Okay, dark on that side. I want to do dark on this side too. Dark at the back, and then just wipe it forward with some clean brush strokes. Now, figures are floating away, that's fine. I'm going to continue that this side and this side. Getting that real dark feel I wanted around the front edge. Darker that side. Okay, while that dries off, I'll get the white out and start playing with a little bit of the white just to punch up the signage, really. <laughs> now I'll find the white. Okay, leave it with me. I know I've got some here from before. I'll see if this will wet up enough. Usually I need to get the, the um, tube, put fresh white out. Yeah, that's a bit too thin, maybe. I like it to be so thick that it's uh, like toothpaste. Here it is. Not too far away. So where to start, where to start. Sometimes I will go over pencil marks that are standing out in the white area. Not all that necessary because they're the ones that you can rub out later on. I'll just put a few spots around this. Across the middle. So being rough, by the way, this is a very rough paper. So as I drag this white gouache across, it goes into little um, lumps and bumps, it sits on the surface 
and breaks up. And it looks very much like a dried brush stroke. It's very handy. Looks like there's something up here on this guttering that I missed before, but I, I got this little spots there, but I might just emphasize those. Uh, and in these, um, most of the windows have a shuttered close with white shutters on them. So that I'll just give a hint of that whiteness now. Had I stopped the painting that I was putting on the wash and gone around each window, it would have ended up looking twee, looking labored. So that's why I come back with gouache. And that's why it's kind of allowed in, the, in watercolor circles. Purists would say I was cheating now, and I give them that. There is some other signage down there. It's very, very, um, how can I put it? It's busy, so I don't, I think it's very confusing. And sometimes what you can get away with in a photograph, a lot more than what you can get away with in a painting. Because in a painting, it just looks wrong. In a photograph, you, you, you're forgiving because you know it's, it was there, it's a photo. So you accept whatever's there. There's some lettering on this, which I'll just hint at. And down the back here, there's a little sign in here. Um, I'm gonna add some white to that window. And it kind of reflects on some of the other windows. back here. Needs a bit more white going back in. So tops of the tabletops could have a touch that they're reflecting the church. Same with the chairs. I'll just put those down a bit lower, a few spots here and there. Now I kind of think that's about it as far as whiteness goes. I don't really want to, I'll just see how it looks. I'll add a tiny bit to this light side of the built of these windows. I mean the left side, but the side the light is hitting from the alley, from the roadway. Just see if that helps up there. No, it's not too bad. Everything helps in, to a degree uh, tell a story and say if you're having to look too closely what's going on. Tops of the stairs can have a little bit. Same with those. And I'm tempted to lighten the tops of these girls. Come back with a bit of colour on them in a minute. feel it's a little bit too um, underdone for me. I think I'd like to add more detail so I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to have a couple of different colours go in here. I always like, when I do landscapes I always like to add reds. So I'm using a rigger here and I'm going to add some bright reds to places like the um, architectural details here around these windows. And maybe there's some signage there that I haven't put in. And of course, this is such a big brush, I mean, a long skinny brush that I find it very hard to do anything too controlled with it. So it's always gonna give me random shapes. And I kind of like that. So I just put some more lines going up here. Now, I'll go back to the blacks. Oops, keep this on the right side so I don't get confused. <laughs> a little brain I have. So I'll just do 
a few more. Uh, oh, that's still still dry. So okay, I've got to wet. I've got to. Um, oh, excuse me. I'm going to dry this. I think about that because I want to match that going up further up. I kind of don't really like it. It's too warm even though it's what's in the picture. I, sort of, I want to fix that so I don't quite know how but I have a feeling I think I know how. And one of the ways is to turn the painting on the side, turn the picture on the side, have a good look at colours what have you got? I'm going to mix up a nice strong purple. I've done this before in paintings. Everyone normally gets a bit upset that I'm doing it, but so I'm going to put some horizontal lines there like that and then come down with the big strokes and then put purple all down this side, except for the facade of the building and except for the signs. I'll run that down like that. So I'm just doing overpainting a purple. And I might just really go dark on that road in the foreground. Okay. Turn it round. And much punchier. Much more interesting shadow side and believe it or not that will lighten up and the painting will come back. I'll show you. Because I love the texture of this road, I'm just going to do a little bit of back, what's the word, uh, washing out, adding the detail back in. I'm going to really work on the perspective of this. Okay. Work this side. The pattern in the road is something I'm not going to even bother thinking about, but I will emphasize the perspective by just doing lines out like this. And I'll come back to a bit of the bright yellow and I'll do it with a bit of the white to that window there. Something down there. And the orange. Almost looks like uh, pastels. Technique we can get there. Okay. And I can also see some, uh, what's the word? Uh, there is there I need to repair not even accurate as far as perspective goes and that's something you really got to work on. Perspective is everything. Okay, so girls I'll darken up again, just make them pop and get their shirts popping or their jackets. Probably mid it would have been midwinter when we were there. So what I do is put the, the paint over the top of that existing white that's there and uh, that will just make it go slightly brighter by uh, about it. Uh, I 
think at the back, okay, I can see another problem. Those marks I have at the back there are a little bit too sharp. So the way to soften them, get a clean brush with just clear water. Just run over the top a few times and smudge them in. And it just loosens up that detail there. Because you don't need things that are very sharp at the back. It, it, trust me, you want them to be fuzzy. Even though you might have perfect eyesight and to you they look perfect. Uh, on the whole, if you fuzz them out, so much better. Tempted to make these chairs here red. So uh, I'm going to dry that off again, just in case. make them red I might just see if I can make them white like lighter yeah this brush is not quite the right size for it I need a much smaller but a very strong brush let me see what else I've got here if they have daggy old things lying around make sure I haven't got paint on them I don't know if this is like it's almost like you need a bristle brush to be able to mm, scrub out I won't keep trying. I shall just get my trusty whites. Thin layer of white on those chairs. We'll define them in that dark area. and fiddle and fiddle. Try and make it look like the sun, that there's a bit of light above just catching the top edges of them. <laughs> it could be one way of doing it. And for that sake, I might just get a little bit more red on this brush over here and define these ones a little bit clearer. Sienna, which is lovely and opaque at this stage, at this thickness. A few vertical lines in behind there. out. These ones are a little bit wrong too. Amazing how much you see wrong at the end of the painting. <laughs> I shouldn't keep saying it's okay. But one of the reasons I like to do these paintings fresh like this is so that you can you guys can see what it takes. It's not magic. It's just Slog. Oh. Trying to find those feet. I don't want them melting into the ground. Okay. And that's going to be my little street in Prague. No. <laughs> I'll say that again. That's going to be my little street in Salzburg. The next one might be Prague. Just going through photos now, looking for some. And I'll put my initials on this one and call it done. I used to box my signature in. I might start doing that again. I love that. It's like a little Asian stamp. Right. That's my uh, Salzburg Street. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed my uh, ups and downs with this one. And I'll catch you in the next. Bye now.